Hey everyone, we're here with the Waldorf Blofeld synthesizer, which is a digital synth from Waldorf, which combines a very simple programming interface with a lot of power under the hood. With virtual analog synthesis from Waldorf Q, as well as wavetable synthesis from Waldorf Microwave, and even FM and sample-based synthesis, the Blofeld has a huge variety of over 1,000 preset programs and the ability to split its 22 voices of polyphony into 16 multi-timbral parts. Waldorf Blofeld is available in a compact desktop module, as well as a 49-key keyboard version with velocity and aftertouch, and both versions have the ability to connect over USB to a computer for MIDI and program transfer. The first thing that you're going to notice when you turn on your Blofeld is that it's incredibly easy to browse through sounds. First off, using the main program knob, you can click up one by one through the sounds on your Blofeld. And then you can use the bank knob, which is parameter one knob, to scroll up through banks A through H. And if you want a specific type of sound, you can use the second parameter knob as a category filter. For example, if I only want to browse through ARPs or basses or effects, keys, and then I use the main program knob to scroll up through only those types of sounds. Editing on the Blofeld is handled in a matrix type situation where each of the corresponding rows changes the function of the four parameter edit knobs at the bottom of the matrix. You can change what the main two parameter knobs control when you're in a row on the matrix using the main program knob and scroll through parameters that aren't included in the matrix. To get back out of the matrix editing, simply press play and you'll be back in the main sound selection screen. So let's get into parameter editing using the matrix on the Blofeld. We're going to start by initializing our sound so we have a blank sound to start from. With the sound selected, press shift and utility and scroll through the store sound pages until you get to init sound. Then press shift and utility to initialize the sound. If I click away from this sound, it won't be stored, so I have to save it if I want to save what I've created. The first row in the matrix is the oscillators, and there are three of them. If I press the oscillator button once, I'm in the oscillator one edit screen, and I can change the shape, for example, by using the first knob at the bottom of the matrix. For example, I can change the shape of the pulse width by using the first parameter edit knob. I can also vary the position on the wavetable, for example, by using the shape knob at the bottom of the matrix to scroll through and select, for example, a wavetable. Then, the pulse width parameter actually controls the position in the wavetable. And those parameters can be modulated, for example, by an external source. So if I turn on pulse width modulation amount, it's by default being controlled by the LFO. And I can change the modulation source from LFO to LFO times mod wheel. For example, which will only initiate modulation of the position of the wavetable when I use the modulation wheel. So that's a little bit of modulating wavetable shapes and there are tons of different wavetable shapes that all come from products like the Waldorf Microwave. And speaking of oscillator sources, if you scroll through all of the wave shapes past the wavetables on the Blofeld until you get to samples, there are 60 megabytes of internal sample memory for sample-based synthesis. So I've pulled up a gated saw wave sound, the default sound on the Blofeld for creating a new program. And let's start by layering a second saw wave slightly detuned. So we start from a fairly basic point of building a sound. Let's change the shape of oscillator two and 
When I play a key, I hear both of the oscillators in perfect tune with each other, but when I use the detune knob, which is the third knob underneath the matrix, and detune them by five cents, I get a little bit of nice virtual analog sounding beating of the oscillators against each other. So now let's check out the filter section. If I press the filter button for the filter row, I get first off cutoff, and resonance, and then I can change the type of filter with the third knob below the matrix. And then I can select the amount of envelope that's applied to that for modulation with the fourth knob below the matrix. And that can go negative as well. Blofeld has two envelopes on the front panel of the matrix, one for the filter and one for the amp and then two more that are accessed via software by scrolling with the main program edit knob. And these are edited like you would any normal ADSR envelope, and you can see the shape of the envelope on screen. For example, if I increase the decay, I can see that on screen, and then the sustain level, and the release, and there's a visual representation of exactly how my envelope looks after I've made those changes. In the LFO section of Blofeld, you have two LFOs that are accessed using the LFO row in the matrix, and then a third LFO that's accessed using the program change knob. You can change things like the shape, for example, sines or triangles, squares, saws, and even random or a sample and hold. And then of course you can change the speed, and then things like the sync, clock, phase, key track, delay, and the fading. Below the LFO section is the mod matrix. The mod matrix has 16 different slots which can basically route any modulation source to any modulation destination. And then you can use the main program edit knob to change the amount. And then you can scroll through and use up to 16 of those slots to modulate pretty much anything with pretty much anything else. The last row in the matrix contains the effects and the arpeggiator. For effects, you can use the knobs below the screen to change the type of effects from chorus, flanger, phaser, overdrive, and etc. And then turn up the mix using the knobs in the matrix, or access the arpeggiator by scrolling through with the main program edit knob, and change things like the mode, for example the direction, one shot, hold, which is also latch, the clocking and the divisions of clocking, as well as the tempo, and of course the clock source. And you can even create a custom arpeggiator pattern where you can go in step by step and edit each step in the arpeggiator and tell Blofeld what you want it to do when it reaches that step. Lastly, let's go over some of the shift menus on the Blofeld. The first of which is the utility menu. So when I press shift and press utility, I can, for example, store sounds and I can scroll through, change the category or the name, destination bank, and the number or I can initialize a sound. Next up is the global menu. Press shift and the second button to the left of the matrix for global things like the contrast of the LCD screen. And you can scroll through these various global parameters using the main program edit knob. For example, the master tune, transpose, MIDI channel, etc. The third shift function, and perhaps one of the coolest shift functions, is the multi mode, where if I press shift and then press multi, I can access the multi-mode and I can build up to 16 parts of multi-timbrality. Remember, I can scroll through these using the main program edit knob and the number of each sound in a multi-timbral program will correspond to its MIDI channel. So for example, sound number five will correspond to MIDI channel number five. So that's the Waldorf Blofeld digital synthesizer. If you have comments or questions or you just want to let us know about a cool sound you made on your Blofeld, let us know in the comments below and check out our channel for more cool Waldorf content. Thanks for watching.